<laughs> yeah, I've been over in Europe and different places in the world, and, and there's some good people everywhere you go, and, and, and lovely people, different customs and places you go. But you know what? Uh, there's, no, there's no place like home. Amen. Right. I thank God for America this morning and, uh, for his people. God's blessing America. How many knows why he's blessing America? Because of you? Huh? Because of you? His people. You know, these, these people in America who, who scream and holler and kick and scream and throw fits because they want to have, can't have their way about a lot of things. You know what? They're living under the umbrella of God's people. They may be prospering, they may do well, they may have a lot of money and have a lot of things and do a lot of things in this country. And it's only because they are living under the umbrella of God's grace and mercy of his people. That's why. Amen. So I thank God for America this morning and, uh, for giving us this land. So we could be free and worship God and come together without having to show passports across the state line <laughs> or, or papers or whatever. And we can just go, come and go as we please. And God's blessed us. And so this little church, this little church here is blessed with God. And we're re reaching out to a lot of folks. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for making us a winner this morning. Lord, we shall overcome. We Amen. Shall overcome. Through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. He shall rule this world. I said, Jesus will rule this world. And guess what? <laughs> We're going to be right by his side. I don't really care much about ruling. I just want to be there by his side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I, just, I want to see him in action. I want to see Jesus in action against his enemies. And I want to see him in action over all this earth. I just want to watch it. I just want to stand there and just watch Jesus move. <laughs> See what he says and what he does. Amen. I've read all the Bible. I've read it over and over and over and over and over. And over. I know what he says, you know, and I've read his story over and over again. It never gets old. I love to read it. Amen. But I'm anxious to hear him say something yes. new. Yes. You ever think about that? Jesus is going to start talking when he comes back and he's going to say something we never heard before. Amen. Woo, glory to God. That's going to be worth it all right there. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Bless us all this morning. In Jesus' name. Lord, lift up your countenance upon us and shine upon us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sit down and let me preach at you. Amen. <laughs> A friend of mine from Texas said, Go ahead, preach at him, Bob, preach at him. <laughs> Amen. It's not really my intention just to preach at you. Amen. I don't just want to preach. I want to speak the word of the Lord. And my prayer is every time I minister the word of God that it will speak to your heart. Yes. Not my words. Because I'm, I'm just an old ignorant, dumb Whatever. I can say that because it's true. But God is all wisdom and all knowledge. Yes. And when we listen to Him and speak what He gives to us, then it's exactly what we need to hear. Exactly right. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Amen. You don't need to hear from Bob, you need to hear from Jesus. Amen. And I don't need, you know, that's what we all need to hear from the Lord. So that's my prayer. God, Amen. you speak. I'll, I'll open my mouth and you feel it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, you know, one preacher I heard say one time from Tennessee, Lord, you pour it in and I'll pour it out. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will. The book of Romans. I had a thought here that I wanted to share with you. Chapter 3. As Paul 
unveils or reveals the grace of God and the new covenant that we have in Christ. He says in verse 21 or 27, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Pastor, what are you at? I'm sorry. Romans 3. I'm sorry, 21. I said 27, 21. I can't read. Numbers. <laughs> I read letters pretty good. If it comes to numbers, it's pretty tough. You know? <laughs> Not very good with numbers. 21, sorry. For all have sinned and come short. I looked at that three, it looked like an eight. I need to get these glasses fixed, man. <clears throat> come short of the glory of God. Now, when we talk about the glory of God, what is the glory of what, what is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? In the Old Testament, we read, we read where the glory of God uh, came down different places. It was in the pillar, cloudy pillar, in the fiery pillar. Uh, it was in the tabernacle, in the temple. Glory of God. <clears throat> it was on the mountain uh, when Jesus was transfigured and the glory of God shone forth from him. The glory of God. Uh, so it says here that man has come short of God's glory. So what what is what is the glory of God. We think of that, we think of, first of all, when we think of glory, we think, well, the outray, the, the shining splendor, you know, of God, the light of God that comes out in rays of light or something like that, the glory or the clouds. We think of, we think of glory in such a manner. And that's part of it. Because, because of who God is and what He is. God is light. God is light. <clears throat> God is all good. God is holy. God is all perfect. Uh, the Bible tells us that the heaven and earth f f fled away from His face. From whose face the heavens and the earth f flee away. Revelation just flees away. That's pretty, that's pretty glorious. I mean, no man has ever seen God, looked upon Him, save the Son. He's in the bosom of the Father. He has declared it. God is so, when He appeared, He couldn't appear in all of His form and all of His glory. Uh, he told Moses on the mountain, He said, no man has ever seen me, because if you look up on me, you will die. You will die. But he said, I will pass by you. My glory will pass by. And I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. A little, a little hole over here. I'll stick you in this hole. <clears throat> and put my hand over you. So that when I pass by, you won't be able to see me. But when he passed by, Moses saw the backside of God. He passed by. Another scripture says that Moses talked face to face with God. It's not, it's not contradicting 
What that means is that whoever Moses was talking with wasn't, wasn't uh, God in all of his glory. It was a manifestation that God chose to appear to speak with Moses. And I believe personally that it looked like Jesus. <coughs> Amen. So the, but the glory of God is, is, is radiates from what he is and who he is and his power who made God who made all things and not only his power and his ability to create but his nature his nature the nature of God is love amen mercy goodness righteousness holiness purity all, all that is perfect is, is all that God is. And whatever, whatever God is, He does. And what He does, He is. His word is the same as His action, and His action is the same as His, as his word. God can't go contrary to Himself. He can't deny Himself. All that He is, He says, and all that he says, he is. Somebody says, what is the word? The word is God. Amen. Amen. And the word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. And this is the way it is with God. God is all that he is in his word, and his word is all that he is. Amen. Yeah. And, so, and so when we consider God's glory in that respect, we see how that man falls short of God's glory. All that God does and all of his actions and all of his ways that are perfect and good and holy, man falls short of that. Now let's go back to, let's go back to the beginning. When God created Adam, he placed him in the garden. And he said, of all the trees you may freely eat, but the tree of life. You shall not touch, or, the, or this tree of knowledge, you shall not touch. Uh, you can eat of the tree of, he was evidently eating of the tree of life because you can eat of all the trees in the garden except for this one. The Bible said the tree of life was in the midst of the garden. But this is before Adam, this is before Adam disobeyed. Before, he, before sin came, Adam was perfect in all of his ways. The righteousness of Adam was, was perfect, and he walked with God. And he ate of the trees and, and, and had everything provided for him. But when Adam disobeyed and the law was given, don't eat of this tree, suddenly his eyes is open. He realized he was naked and told God. And God said, who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the tree? And so God drove him out. He drove him out of the garden. He said, man has become like us, us. I wonder who he was talking to. Amen. The Bible said the son was with the father even before the world was, and he made all things by the son. He made all things by the word. So Jesus was there. The son was there with the father. His name wasn't Jesus at the time, but he was there. <laughs> he was the son. Amen. His name, he was given the name Jesus when he was born of Mary. But before then, he was, he was the son with the father. He was the word that, that was with God. And, and, the, and the, he said, man has become like us. How, how has he become like us? Because he knows now good from evil. And he said, lest he stretch forth his hand now and partake of the tree of life and live forever. Why, why, did God, why was God concerned about that? Because now Adam has sinned. Now Adam is unrighteous. He's unholy. He's unfit. He's not worthy. He's tainted. He has spotted with sin. He has fallen from the grace of God. He's fallen from the glory of God. And now God says he cannot stretch forth his hand and touch the tree of life because there's sin here. He can't have it. Let me tell you, you can't have eternal life if there's sin there. If there's sin, you can't have life. Hello? When I 
out, Brother Bob, we all sin. Well, let me get to it. <laughs> he sinned, therefore, uh, he was cut off. He was cut off of fellowship with God. And God drove him out of the garden, lest he stretch forth his hand and partake of the tree of life and live forever. Sin cannot live forever. Amen. Sin has to be judged. Huh? People just go on today in the world and live their life just, you know, uh, uh, foot loose and fancy free as if they're going to live forever. You're not going to live forever. Do what you will. Go where you will. Be what you will. You will not live forever. No matter what it is you enjoy doing, your, 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 your joy will end. Your happiness will come to an end in this world. Isn't that right? Amen. 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 So, so Adam uh, was driven out. God gave him, uh, 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 he made uh, 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 garments for him out of, out of, le out of uh, animal skin. I get it, man. And clothed him with animal skin. Everybody want to make a big, deal, a big deal about that, about sacrificing and all that. Well, maybe it was. Maybe it was, but I'm not going to get into that. He clothed them and drove them out. And the Bible says he put cherubims Plural, he put cherubims, more than one, cherubims, at the east end of the garden, and a flaming sword that turned each, each way to guard the tree of life so that no man could come and get to the tree of life. Now, personally, I, wanna, I believe this. I believe that the, the sword represents the law of God. If you try to come and get life through the law, you will die. Huh? Any man tries to climb his way up any other way than the way that God's provided, he will surely die. Because a flaming sword is there to protect that life. Sin cannot enter in to this life. Something's got to be done with your sins. For you can come. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. So he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which means now his eyes is open. Now he has become as God. Little g, as gods. The Bible says, Jesus himself said, did he not say, ye are gods to whom the word of God came? Ye are gods. Little small g. Not the big g, the small g. <laughs> You are God's. And he says, how is it then that you don't believe that because I say I'm the son of God whom God hath sanctified and sent into the world? Amen. You won't believe on me. He says, he says God called you God's and all I'm calling myself is his son. Amen. But he sanctified me and sent me into the world. So Adam had the knowledge. What knowledge did he have? Okay. From that point forward, man began to do whatever it is he does apart from God. So let's, go, let's get away from the glory of God for a minute and get to the glory of man. Did you know man has glory? The glory of, what is the glory of man? Go outside or just look, in, look around in this room. Look around at these four walls. Go outside and everywhere you look, everything you see, aside from nature, what God has made, everything you see upon this earth that man has created, whatever that is, from the smallest things to the largest thing, the biggest thing, all that man has created and all that man does it's his glory. All that man accomplishes in this earth. When Adam and Eve had Cain, and Cain slew Abel, and Cain talked to the Lord, and the Lord sent him out. And I preached on that here last week or week before about how he went out from the presence of the Lord. But if you read the scripture, the very first thing it says that Adam did was get a wife, 
Now somebody says, where did she come from if he was the third, per, third or fourth person in the world? Well, Adam and Eve, you know, had lots of children. Huh? They had lots of kids other than Cain and Abel and Seth. They had other kids. And they lived hundreds of years. So when Cain got his wife, he was probably already about 200 years old. I don't know how old he was. So by that time, you know, there was a bunch of other kids came along. <laughs> and so uh, wherever he went, he went, the Bible says he went down to the land of Nod, N-O-D, Nod, and got himself a wife. Amen. That's the first thing he did. When he went out from the presence of God, he left the presence of the Lord and, and left and went out into the world, into the earth. And the first thing he thought to himself, man, the first thing I want to do is get me a wife. <laughs> well, thank God he didn't say, I got to get, my, get myself a man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He wanted to get himself a woman. Amen. And by the way, let me just say this as a compliment to all of you beautiful women. In my opinion, you are the most beautiful creature that God ever made. Amen. The woman is the most beautiful of God's creatures. Amen. You, you are the crown of his achievement. Amen. Is the woman, the beautiful woman. Uh, and so when God, when he got him a wife, the very thing, the very first thing he did was build a city. Did you know that? Cain had a wife. They had a son. They called his name Enos. E-N-O-S. Enos. And Cain built a city. And he named the city after his son, Enos. So the first thing that man does apart from God, is to glorify himself. What he can build, what he can do. Somebody said, well, now God gives men that. Uh, did you ever, ever stop to think about this? What was it, what would it have been that Adam would have done had he not sinned? Had there not been no fall, of the human race. And Adam and Eve was there in the garden. And the Bible says that God provided everything for them. It was provided. God planted the garden. Eastward in Eden. God created the earth. He created everything. He created the man. He put him there. And he planted him in the garden. That he himself planted. God made the garden. He just put man there to tend the garden. Whatever that means. Put it there to tend it. So I've often wondered, what was it that Adam would have done through all the years to come and all the centuries and all the millennia that was to come? What would he have done had he never fell from grace? I've often wondered. But we see what man does and what he can do in this world today or what he's been doing ever since the beginning. From the great pyramids to the, huh? To all the empires of the world and all the great buildings and structures and empires and cities and, and of all the things that man has created uh, for the glory of man. Through his intellect, through his knowledge. The Bible said he had knowledge of good and evil. So he becomes, man becomes a creator. He becomes a maker of things. He has imagination. He has intelligence. He has the ability. God gave him this intelligence to be able to do things like God did. Not that he's God. Not that he can create something out of nothing. He has to use something that God made. You know, it's like the argument, what was it that somebody uh, read where somebody's talking about the, uh, where somebody was trying to prove uh, that they could, they could do things like God did. 
I can make this and I can make that. And they was arguing with God. And God said, okay. They said, I can do this. I can create things out of, out of this dirt like you did. He said, okay, bring your own dirt. <laughs> Don't bring mine, bring yours. <laughs> See, so everything that man creates is from the things that God has already created. He gave man the intelligence and the ability to understand what to do and how to do it and how to go about doing it, getting things out of the earth to create with. Amen. Right? This is what it could be known and what it is known as the glory of man. But not only in his ability to create, but like God, who he is who the man is, his character, his nature, what he's like, how he acts, how he behaves, how he thinks, how he lives. All of these things make up the man who he is and what he is. If you're a man... When you think of man, what do you think of? You think of all that encompasses man or woman. When I say man, I mean woman. See, you're a man too. You're a woe man. <laughs> Amen? When God created Eve and brought him to Adam, he said, whoa, man. <laughs> yeah. when, he brought it to, when he brought it to Eve, when he brought it to Adam, he said, look at her. <laughs> That's what I'd have done. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Amen. Uh, Amen. Now, where was I? <laughs> uh, when we think of man, we think of all that encompasses man. See, man and women. So all that, all, that has, all that concerns man, we think of man. We, listen, you don't think of a man as a statue, do you? When you think of men or women, you don't think of them as statues or as robots or as inanimate, inanimate objects. You think of them as something that moves around and moves about and talks and sees and hears and does and, and uses her hands and her feet that moves about with, has a body and that lives and breathes and does things. Amen? For instance, if, if a certain person is, a, is a, a plumber, a man's a plumber, when you look at him, the first thing you think about is a bunch of pipes and, <laughs> and sewage <laughs> and bathrooms. You think about all these things in your mind when you think about the guy being a plumber or if he's a carpenter or if he's an official or if he's a, a white collar worker, whatever it is he does. Uh, you know, if he, if he works in an office, you think of a desk. Huh? You look at the man, you meet him. If you think of a senator, if you meet a politician, shall I say? <laughs> You want, to, you want to see a liar? Come down here and I'll show you one. <laughs> but whenever you think of a man and what he is, what, of a man, you think of him and all that he is, which makes up his character, makes up everything about him. Yes. Right? So everything about man, whatever that is, is his glory. Yes. Now, some men are not so glorious. Some men you think of, you think of womanizer. Some men you think of as hypocrites and liars, and thieves, thugs, murderers, ungodly, unholy. When you think of man, you think of his character. What is he? I tell you what he is. He is apart from God. 
He's in his own world and he's living for himself. He's his own God and he creates his own glory. He builds cities. What's wrong with building a city? Nothing. But he's building it for himself. Huh? He is apart from God. But God allows him, God has allowed mankind, he has allowed the human race to carry on in this earth as it has over all these millenniums and do whatever they do, build whatever they will, live however they want to live, worship whatever they want to worship, be the kind of person that they want to be. He allows that to happen. Unless God intervenes somewhere. Unless God decides to come down and walk among men. Man can't enter God's world, but God came down and entered into man's world. When God spread men over the face of the earth from the Garden of Eden... They created and did all kinds of things in the earth and, and got to the point where they forgot all about God the Creator and they began to create their own gods that they could worship. And knowing the truth about God, they held that truth in unrighteousness. In unrighteousness. <clears throat> and began to worship the creature more than the Creator. And they became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart became darkened. And they began to be burned in their lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. And women burned in their lust to one one another. God turning them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are inconvenient. And they would believe a lie and be damned. But God, hallelujah, God is still God. God's glory is still above all. And no matter how bad the world may look to us, no matter how dark the world may seem to us or how sinful and ungodly it may seem. And it has grown worse and worse over the years. We talk about the world getting worse in our lifetime. Think about what's happened over the millennium. No matter how dark it looks, there is still a light that shines. The name of Jesus. When it's spoken, commands reverence and honor and glory. Man then in his glory and all of his accomplishments, he's proud and becomes arrogant. <coughs> what he's done and men live out their lives in the same spirit pride and arrogance he's living life what he thinks to the fullest or the best that he can or as much as he can not realizing that he's how Short, he's fallen from God's glory, from God's character, from God's nature. He's gone on his way and created his own world apart from God. The knowledge of good and evil. We have the knowledge. We can do it. We have the ability. We can create it. It matters not about the moral questions. 
It matters not about the good and the evil. We can do anything we want to do. And we don't have to listen to God. We don't have to concern ourselves with what God has said. We'll go our own way and do our own thing. And we'll live the way we want to live. Where we want to live and how we want to live. And God lets it go. Somebody says, I have a right to live this way. No, you don't. No, you do not have a right. But God in his mercy allows you to live. And to create and do whatever it is you do in life. Apart from him. Not even in him a thought. God has no equation in your life other than the fact that without him you would have no breath. <laughs> without him you wouldn't even be alive. But whether or not you give him the glory, the praise for that, it doesn't matter. You go on your way and do what you want to do. And God in his mercy allows it to happen. Amen? Amen. So the Bible tells us now, when God intervened and gave them the law, he came down, spoke to Abraham, called the people out for himself. 400 and something years later, when he brought them out of the land of Egypt, he gave them the law. He gave them a measure. He gave them a rule of life to live by. And we see the glory of God or the character of God in the law of God. Yes. I am holy, you be holy. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. You're do Why did he tell them don't do it? Because they were already doing it. Yeah. You're in the world and you're doing all of these things. I don't want you to do these things. I want you to be different from all the rest of the people of the earth because you're my people. And I've called you out of all the peoples of the earth to be my people. And this is my law for you. And I want you to obey my law and do what I tell you to do. Amen. Because you are different from the rest of the people because I called you. That's what makes you different. What makes me different this morning? I, God called me. Hallelujah. What makes you different in the world? Amen. God's calling on you makes you different. Amen. Amen. Doesn't mean that suddenly you're a different kind of human being. You know, you're from planet X. <laughs> You're from the same human race as everybody else. But because God laid his hand on you, man, that must make a difference in me. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord laid his hand on me. His spirit came and made me free. I know the Lord and laid his hand on me. Amen. The Lord laid his hand on me. Lord laid his hand on you. When the Lord lays his hand on you, that makes a difference. When God calls you by his name, that makes a difference. Hallelujah. No longer of this world, you belong to God. <laughs> okay, give us the law. We'll hear what you got to say. We don't want to hear. No, we don't want to hear. They were afraid. They didn't want to hear the sound of the trumpet from Mount Sinai. They didn't want to come near the, where the mountain was shaking and the fire was burning and the earthquake and all the, the, the loud noise and the God's thunderous voice speaking. He says, Moses, you go up there and talk to him and listen. We don't want to hear what he's got to say. I can imagine what that must have been look, looked like. It was so fierce and so fearful. Listen, there's nothing, there's nothing we're not kidding here. It was so fearful, they didn't want to hear it. It was so frightful, they didn't want to see. They didn't want to be near. No. No, Moses, he goes up there. He said, I exceedingly, you know where the Quakers come from? You ever hear of the Quakers? <laughs> Moses was the first one. <laughs> He said, I exceedingly fear and quake. <laughs> he was the first Pentecostal, amen. 
First Pentecostal. Like seemingly fear and quake. Amen. God gave them the law. for a measure of a rule to live by. God's standard of holiness. His standard of holiness was in the law. Amen. His standard to live by. But when man even fail to keep that law, we come short again. We come short. We can't live by this standard. It's too hard. We can go along with it for a while and do a few things and have the feasts every year and, and keep the sacrifices and animals and build the temple and all that. But after a while, it just becomes a drudge. It becomes old. It becomes worn out. It becomes something they really can't attain to. They can't keep it. It's not really in their heart to do. There's no real keeping of the law. Because no one seeks after God. There's no one good. There's no one really that wants to hear God. They want to create something. They want to build something. They want to, they want to, they want to appear themselves to be something religious and holy and good. But deep down inside, God knows their hearts. You generation of vipers. How can you escape damnation? Jesus said. So the standard of God's holiness, his glory, is not in them. So God gives us another standard. He gives us something else that bears in himself in his face, in his heart, in his mind, in his character. Yes, the glory Hallelujah. of God in the face of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. I had a thought last night as I was thinking about all this. Miracles, healing, signs and wonders, the raising of the dead, all of these things flowed from his perfect and holy nature. It was as natural for Christ to raise the dead as it was for him to show kindness to a stranger. Can we say that again? It was just as natural for Christ to raise the dead as it was for him to show kindness to a stranger. The glory of God. The glory is nature. Hallelujah. Let me read your scripture. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 11. Verse 10. In that day, in that day shall there be a root of Jesse. Which shall stand for an ensign to the people.
Jesus stands for us this morning. He's our flag. Talk about the flag, the good old stars and stripes that stands for America. Jesus stands for us. What am I? Look to, the, look to the Christ. That's who I am. What is America? Look at that flag. It represents everything that we are and everything that we've done. The stars and stripes. And I, I love the flag. I love the flag. Anybody, anybody that, that tramples that flag ought to be horse whipped. Thank God for America. Thank God for, for our country and for our flag. And I salute that flag every time I, every time I salute it. Hallelujah. And any politician who wants to destroy that flag should leave the country. If you don't love America, get out of America. And I'm not going to get too much into politics because so sure, sure as I do, somebody's going to have some slurry thing to say about it. But I want you to know that I'm proud of America. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud of our flag. I'm proud of what God has given to us. And I salute that flag because it represents everything that we are as a people. All right. Jesus Christ is the same. He is the flag of our life. He is the flag of his people. He represents everything that we are. And I stand up before Christ and I salute him. I honor him. I worship him. I praise his name. Glory. Hallelujah. There shall be a root of Jesse and he shall stand as an ensign for the people. Amen. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. Amen. Hallelujah. What does that mean? I mean when Christ died on that cross and he paid for all of our sins and he purchased us with his own blood and he was buried and rose again. He says, finish, it's done. Hallelujah. He sat down at the right hand of God on high. It is done. It is finished. And he rested in his work. Christ rested in what he did. He said, my work is finished. My work is done. It's through. It's finished. God is satisfied. All is satisfied. All is well. I will be at rest in what I've done and what I've accomplished. Therefore, his rest is glorious. When Jesus came, listen to me. Glory to God. I'm going to get into the meat of it now. Hallelujah. Jesus came into a world of man. Jesus came into a world that man had created for himself. Jesus had come into a people who had built and created and rejected God and put God out of their life, out of their mind and out of their heart. Then Jesus came. He didn't come to join the rest of the world. He didn't come to build a city. He didn't come to, praise God, do anything but show forth the glory of his Father upon this earth. Jesus never built a thing. He never even wrote a book. Remember that, remember that, that saying, this one solitary life? Yes. Jesus never had anything that, uh, that men that we consider as great had. He didn't have an army follow him. He didn't build armies. He didn't build parliaments. He didn't build congresses. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't write no constitution. <laughs> and yet... All the armies that ever marched and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the congresses that have ever been have not affected life upon this earth as that one solitary life. Amen. Jesus owned nothing but the coat on his, on his back, the clothes on his back. He had nothing. He didn't come to get a wife. Like Cain, well, first thing I'll do is get me a wife. <laughs> you know why? Because he didn't come for his glory. What is it that man does in all of his lifetime? I'll tell you what he does. What all he does is for his glory. 
Yes. Well, that, that doesn't, well, now, well, that sounds kind of religious. It's not, it's not really the glory. Well, you understand what glory is. Glory is everything a man does for himself, to himself, and of himself, whatever that is. Well, I would like to do this and like to do that, and I'd like to do this and like to do that, and like go ahead and do it. You're gonna do it. Do it. Amen. Nobody's holding you back. Do it. But know this: the all of the glory of man is as the grass of the fields. <laughs> the grass withers. And the flower thereof falls away. But the word of God. And his name is Jesus. The word of God endures forever. When the great pyramid has fallen. Christ remains. When the great civilizations of man has crumbled in the dust, Christ remains. When all that you want to do in life fails you and you're brought down to the bottom of the barrel and your health is gone and you lie sick in bed dying, Lay there, take your medicine, and you're dying. Jesus remains. He is still the Savior. When all of your life has been spent doing what you do, it will end. All the money you can make, it will end. I'm not discouraging you from making money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you don't don't do anything else the rest of your life. Just go home, sit down like a sit down like a statue. No. Please understand what I'm saying. But now, as children of God. See, God came and intervened into man's territory. God intervened, and thank God he did. He intervened into the, into the world of men and all that he does in life. Hallelujah. So that now as children of God, whatever it is I do, whatever it is I have to do in life, whatever it is I find myself doing, I know. First and foremost, I belong to the Creator. Yes. And He is the God of my life. Right. It's not this money I'm working for, right. but Him. Because this money will surely pass away. It's not the gold I may dig out of the ground because it will surely burn up and pass away. It's not the things I own and things I have and things I desire and things I build. They will surely pass away. Now I know. Now I know. You know why I know? Hallelujah. Because Jesus came. And he says, come with me, boys. I'll show you how. I'll show you how to get. I'll show you how to get to the tree of life. I'll show you how to partake of the tree of life. Hallelujah. You've had the tree of knowledge. Now I'm going to show you what it's like to eat of the tree of life. Hallelujah. I'm going to take your sins away. And I'm going to give you life. Life eternal. Now I'm going to take away all that consumes you. And I'm going to be your God. Now everything that was yours is gone. Now I am everything in your life. I am your life. I am your standard of living. I am your glory. For whom God has called, he also glorifies. 
And when we look into the perfect law of liberty, and that perfect law of liberty is Jesus Christ. Amen. What is God's perfect glory? It's Jesus. And he who looks into the perfect law of liberty is changed into the same image from glory to 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 glory changed into the same image Christ is our glory what is the glory of America Christ What makes America great? Jesus! What makes life worth living, worth doing, worth being? Jesus! Can't you see that? Don't you know that? It's nothing else. It's Jesus! If I'm going to be known for anything as a preacher when I die, let it be that I proclaim Jesus. Because when I die and leave this world, that's where I'm going to be. You can walk on the streets of gold if you want to. You can talk to the angels if you want to. You can find Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob if you want to. You can talk with Paul and Peter and James and John if you want to. But if you're looking for me, go find Jesus. That's where I'll be. I said, if you're looking for me, go find Jesus because that's where I will be. Christ as a man. Christ as a man understood the weakness of the flesh. As a man. Now understand me, as a man, he was God and man. He was the God man. But as the man, Christ Jesus, just like we are, he understood the weakness of the flesh. And therefore, he maintained his strength in spirit. Whatever it took, he could not fail. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, and told his disciples, stay up with me for an hour and pray. But they fell asleep. <laughs> oh, the glory of sleep. <laughs> Boy, I know that every day when you, amen, about, about two o'clock in the afternoon, it's time for that glorious nap, amen. <laughs> Most of you know what I'm talking about here this morning. <laughs> oh, the glorious time of sleeping at nap time. Amen. Jesus came up and he said, could you not stay with me one hour? Could you not watch one hour? Flesh. The flesh indeed is weak. But the Spirit's willing. Jesus knew all about it, but he could not <coughs> fail. He never fail. failed, and he never will. One man who came to build nothing in this world but the kingdom of God 
in the hearts of man. He had nothing. He owned nothing. He wanted nothing. The glory of God <clears throat> and the perfect law of God and the obedience was in his heart. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the spirit came upon him. And when he died, he took all of your sins upon himself and gave you his righteousness. What did Jesus do when he was here? <laughs> what has Jesus accomplished? <laughs> Heaven and earth. What has Jesus accomplished? Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words will never pass away. That's quite an accomplishment. Stand with me. Do you feel it? Amen. Man, I tell you what. I believe there's a glory cloud here this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Would y'all be shocked if I did? <laughs> I don't ever speak in tongues right here. Much you people know that. Hallelujah. Jesus is the glory. Jesus is the glory. Jesus is the glory of God. God has accomplished everything in him. All that God required, all that God demands of mankind from the very beginning is in the Son. He stepped up. God says, what am I going to do? Adam failed. Jesus stood up and said, Father, I'll go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you this morning, Father. Thank you for the glory of Christ that you have given to us. All to the glory of God, our Father. Jesus is for the glory of God. And you and I, through him, Glorify God. God is glorified in the church by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning when you leave here, I want you to say a prayer. Say, God, whatever it is I do for the rest of my life, let me do it for your glory. Whatever it is you're involved in, no matter what your work is, what you do is in your job, it's okay. Whatever you do. The Bible says, do it as unto the Lord. Tell God, say, God, I want my life to glorify you. Because I want Christ to be magnified in me. And if Christ is magnified in us, God will surely be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. So be it, Father. 
So be it, Father. Arrest us. Take a hold of us, God. Take a hold of my heart. Soften me. Make me tender. Make me like the clay in the potter's hand. Shape me and mold me, oh God. Whatever pleases you, whatever is befitting, whatever is befitting to you, whatever you want of me, let my life, let my life, the life that you gave me, the life which I now live in the flesh, let me live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How much you cared for us. How much you loved us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.